Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Yesterday, 40 million health professionals sent a letter to the leaders of each of the G20 nations calling for a healthy and green recovery from COVID-19. I fully support this. The human cost of COVID-19 has been devastating and the so-called lockdown measures have turned lives upside down. But the pandemic has given us a glimpse of what our world could look like if we took the bold steps that are needed to curb climate change and air pollution. Our air and water can be cleaner, our streets can be quieter and safer, and many of us have found new ways to work while spending more time with our families. Yesterday, WHO published our manifesto for a green and healthy recovery from COVID-19 with six simple prescriptions. First, protect nature, which is the source of the air, water, and food on which human health depends. Second, ensure that homes and health facilities have water and sanitation, access to clean and reliable energy, and are resilient to climate change. Third, invest in a quick transition to clean energy that will cut air pollution so that when COVID-19 has been defeated, people can breathe clean air. Fourth, promote healthy and sustainable food systems to give people access to healthy and affordable food. Fifth, build cities that integrate health into all aspects of urban planning, from sustainable transport systems to healthy housing. And six, stop subsidizing fossil fuels that cause pollution and drive climate change. As some countries start to reopen their societies and economies, the question we must answer is whether we will just return to the way things were or whether we will learn the lessons the pandemic is teaching us about our relationship with our planet. Building back better means building back greener. When I started as Director General almost three years ago, one of the first things I do, did was to put out a call to all the staff to contribute ideas for how to transform WHO and make it more effective. And I was asking many of my colleagues, saying, please generate crazy ideas to transform our organization. One of the ways I did that was by instituting open hour where any staff member can come to talk to me about any issue they want every Thursday afternoon. These ideas became the basis of the transformation process we have been implementing over the past few years. And I would like to use this opportunity to thank all the staff who contributed their ideas that are now changing the face of WHO. At one of the first meetings, a staff member proposed the creation of a WHO foundation the idea was to establish a way to generate funding for WHO from sources we haven't tapped before, including the general public. Until now, WHO has been one of the few international organizations which has not received donations from the general public. I immediately recognized the enormous potential in this idea, thanks to the staff who suggested this idea. It's well documented that one of the greatest threats to WHO success is the fact that less than 20% of our budget comes in the form of flexible access contribution from member states, while more than 80% is voluntary contributions from member states and other donors, which are usually tightly earmarked for specific programs. In effect, that means WHO has little discretion over 
the way it spends its funds, almost 80% of its funds. We have been working hard to encourage member states to increase the proportion of flexible funds they give us. And we, have very, we are very grateful for those countries that have given us greater flexibility in recent years. And there is improvement. But for WHO to fulfill its mission and mandate, there is a clear need to broaden our donor base and to improve both the quantity and quality of funding we receive, meaning more flexible funding. Since February 2018, we have been hard at work supporting the establishment of the WHO Foundation. And today, after a hard work of two years, more than two years, it gives us enormous pleasure to launch it officially, to launch the WHO Foundation. This is a historic step for WHO as an integral part of our resource mobilization strategy to broaden the contributor base. The WHO Foundation was not ready to launch when the COVID-19 pandemic began. So with the support of the United Nations Foundation, the Swiss Philanthropy Foundation, and several other partners, we launched the COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund. In just two and a half months, this fund has raised more than 214 million US dollars from more than 400,000 individuals and companies, including $55 million from the One World Together at Home virtual concert. These funds have been used to buy lab diagnostics, personal protective equipment, and to fund research and development, including for vaccines. The Solidarity Response Fund is powerful proof of concept for the WHO Foundation. To further promote the Solidarity Response Fund, WHO has partnered with the Animation Studio Illumination to launch a public, uh, public service announcement today aimed at children featuring the beloved animated characters, the minions and Gru voiced by the actor Steve Carroll to promote ways for people to stay safe from COVID-19. The Solidarity Response Fund will continue to receive donations to support WHO's work on COVID-19, while the WHO Foundation will help to fund all elements of WHO's work and be fully aligned with our priorities. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce Professor Thomas Zeltner, who is the founder and chair of the board of the WHO Foundation. Professor Zeltner is a Swiss physician and lawyer with a long and distinguished career in public health, including as the Director General of the National Health Authority and as Swiss Secretary of State for Health. Professor Zeltner, Thank you for your support and collaboration over the past 18 months. And the floor is yours to speak about the new WHO Foundation, which is being born today. Thank you, Professor. Well, thank you so 